and good morning, class of 2013. I'm so happy to receive this wonderful honor. Queen's College is where the seeds of my success were sown. So I'm enormously grateful to this great institution which welcomes the student from all over the world and gives them a solid foundation for life. It is a particular privilege to be here today to share this milestone in your lives. That is where my own adult life began. And I remember with great happiness that day nearly 40 years ago when I stood where you are standing now. When I look back on those days, it seems almost unimaginable how my life has panned out. How did I get from there to here? Allow me to share a few humble lessons and principles that have served me well and may give some insight into how that journey took place. I hope that they will also help you as you set sail on your own journey. I was born in Iran in 1945. At the age of 21, I came to New York with only $750, which were the royalties I had earned from a book I wrote when I was just 14. I immediately headed to Queens, which was done like now, one of the world's greatest melting pots. I rented a tiny room on Woodside Avenue, which was three by four meters, just big enough for a chest of drawers and a bed. My Land Rose Cat Mini was my alarm clock, waking me up at 4 a.m. each day by licking my face. The room cost $8 a week. I could not afford to be lazy, as my saving would only last for a few months. So within hours of arriving in New York, I walked into a diner on Queens Boulevard and got a job flipping burgers for a couple of dollars an hour. I showed up at 5 a.m. the next day and started work. My father, who was still in Iran, was concerned when he discovered a few months later that I was waiting tables to pay for my education. He offered to send me money, but I had promised myself from the moment I left home that I would make it on my own. I reassured him that working in a restaurant was just the first step. Everyone has to start somewhere. The important thing is not to get stuck there or lose sight of your dreams. Every afternoon, I studied at an English school, and a year later, I enrolled, there, on, 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 I enrolled here as a night student, having been told by the dean that if I achieved top grades, I would be allowed to become a day student. So I studied like crazy. I slept only four hours a night, a habit that had stayed with me ever since and did well enough academically that I was finally able to enroll here as a regular student. During the course of my education, I also began to buy and sell works of art, harnessing the knowledge I had first acquired from my father, who was an art dealer in Tehran. Unbeknownst to him, that knowledge was far more valuable than any financial aid he could ever have offered me. When I, was in, when I was not in a class, I was regularly visiting museums, auction houses, and art galleries so I could deepen this knowledge. By the time I graduated, I no, I, I no longer needed to count my pennies. More important, I kept the best works of art for myself, thereby building the foundation 
for my family's collections. When I look back now on those days, years ago, I see a number of lessons that I would like to share with you. First, there is very little in life that you cannot achieve if you dream, plan, and pursue. These are the three components in the triangle of success. So do not hesitate to have big dreams. This is especially relevant to you who are entering the world of business in these difficult times. You may say there are not that many opportunities anymore. But the same was true for me all those years ago. I cannot tell you it is going to be a bed of roses, but you have no idea what you are truly capable of until you try. Second, it's important to understand that you need to pursue everything in life with passion. Life without a passion is like fire without a flame. Every night, I go to sleep and dream of my passion, and every morning, I wake up pursuing it. For many years, only a few museum or collector shared my interest in these areas of my collecting. But for me, these objects of, these objects of beauty were a joy forever. Eventually, more and more people came to share this passion of mine, and today our collections are world-renowned. Third, never be afraid to be yourself and forge your own path. As the saying goes, do not try to be somebody else, because that position has already been taken. Rely on your own instinct. You should never underestimate their power. Of course, you will encounter setbacks. But over time, you will find out that every one of them happened for a very good reason. If you learn from your mistakes, they will become a cornerstone of your success. Two things are the enemies of success, greed and fear. If you are greedy, you lose your way. If you have fearful, you don't take risks. Fourth, be patient. We are living in a quick, fixed generation in which everybody wants to be rich and famous overnight. My advice to you is stay focused and concentrate on your goal, persevering even when the summit seems out of reach. For example, in the early 1970s, when I was just starting out as a collector in New York, I bought a rare and precious 14th century Holy Quran, but it was missing a major page which I was determined to find. In 1990s, a dealer in London showed me a pile of loose pages from many different manuscripts, and amongst them, I thought I had discovered the missing page. When I told him, he laughed and said, that is like finding a needle in a haystack. Sure enough, when we brought the page and the Quran together, we realized that it really was the missing page. So they were reunited after what may have been 500 years of separation. The reason I have devoted decades of my life to art is that it transcends nationalism and cultural borders. People are often surprised that I have focused so much on collecting Islamic treasures, given that I am Jewish. But remember, first we are born human beings, and our religion is secondary. I grew up in a Muslim country with Muslim friends, and I understood even as a boy that we are cousins. The more I study Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and other faith and ways of life, the more I discover that, that, that there is far more that unites us than divides us. In every case, the messages 
are the same. Love, compassion, peace, harmony, unity, and respect. As the great Persian poet and philosopher Jami once wrote, each tinted fragment sparkles in the sun a thousand colors, but the light is one. So many misconceptions exist about different faiths and cultures, but the differences between us are not so great. As I often say, the biggest weapon of mass destruction is ignorance. And if ignorance is the problem, education must be the solution. <laughs> to defend the nation, you need soldiers. To build the nation, you need education. You have been blessed with a fine education, and, as, and I hope that you will lead by example, spreading this understanding and building bridges wherever you go. People often speak of need to show tolerance for others. But tolerance may not be the right word because it suggests that you are putting up with something we do not like. Surely, we should replace the word tolerance with the word respect. Our responsibility is not to change other people's mind, but to respect their beliefs and their ways of life and to treat them with dignity. <laughs> the key is to listen to others with an open mind and open heart, always willing to learn from them. Perhaps that is why we have two ears and only one mouth. Maybe this was the Creator's way of telling us to listen more and speak less. If each of you decide today to live in this spirit of harmony, just imagine the effect you will have. As you begin this new chapter in your lives, I ask you to consider this important question. What is success? Is it money, prestige, fame? I have been blessed with success in the world of business, and it has enabled me to pursue my passion for collecting. But the truth is that money counts for little compared with the fact that I have been married for 35 years to someone I love and have three caring sons who we cherish. The house of Harili has four pillars, me and our three sons. But what is a house without a roof? The roof over our house is my beloved wife. For me, there is a huge difference between being rich and being wealthy. Being rich is just a matter of money. Being wealthy is about family, friendship, love, spirituality, charity, good health, and making contribution to humanity. What I wish for all of you is an abundance of wealth. After all, we are only a temporary custodian of what we think we own. Ownership is a myth. The only legacy we truly leave behind is the impact that we have on other people's lives. As a collector, philanthropist, and a writer, I have tried to use art and education to, 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 draw, to draw people together, creating harmony instead of mistrust. This has been a much greater source of satisfaction to me than any material success I have ever achieved. Ultimately, the question is not how much you make, but how much difference you make in the lives of others. 
always ask yourself this. What am I doing to help my family, my friends, my community, and the world? If you live this way, you'll discover that the more you share with others, the more the universe will share with you, bringing you endless joy and fulfillment. So graduate, my brothers and sisters, I leave you with this suggestion, which I hope will bring you great happiness. Be selfish, get out there and help someone. Thank you and God bless you all.